It's Teresa. Boys, it looks like a birch broom and fits again today, but you know what? I just got out of the shower and I uh, haven't done my hair or nothing like that. I might curl it or something, right? Anyway, but I just wanted to come in on here and tell you a story. I wanted to tell you like about um, Codco. Codco, I did a bit yesterday on TikTok uh, that Codco did called Newfoundland Law. And it was about a vocal coach who was trying to teach Laurence Olivier how to say how to say I'm a Newfoundlander law. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, but I had to shorten it because the TikTok's only 60 seconds, right? But anyway, that's it. But uh, I loved Codco. Like Codco was my favorite show when I was a teenager. Um, Codco, if you don't know, was a show that was produced in Newfoundland and it ran from like 88 to 90 something, early 90s. So throughout my entire high school years, uh, Codco was on the air and my dear, I loved it. And like, you know, because I love comedy, I love theater, I love sketches like that. I love sketch comedy, right? So it was the best, that and uh, Kids in the Hall and Saturday Night, Live, Saturday Night Live. But I especially liked Codco because I could relate to it, right? Where there were Newfoundlanders and stuff and they made fun of uh, uh, made fun of Newfoundlanders and I love that. I love that Newfoundlanders can make fun of themselves and you know what? We're not stupid and you know, this is somewhat of an act. Imagine, imagine smart Newfies, loves it. Right, and they were smart newfies, let me tell you. I, they never, no one made me laugh more. I loved the Friday night girls, right? And they used to be like, oh, what are we gonna do? It's Friday night. And then it's like, oh, Matilda, look, Barbie's still in her evening gown. Sure, she got nowhere to go, right? And then they'd have a party for the dolls and stuff like that and get them dressed up. And they'd be like, oh, what kind of chips do you want? The crinkly or the plain old? And she's like, oh, the plain old. And I loved it, yeah. And uh, anyway, I love that bit and I love the house of Budgel. That's where Kev got his name, my dad Kev Budgel. Yeah, I named him like, cause he had a real person first name. I wanted him to have a real person last name and what better than Budgel? Because I want my own last name. That would be too like, you know, normal. Mary Walsh, I love her. She, to me, is so funny. She doesn't mind making a fool of herself, just like me. Yeah, and uh, anyway, so I, my dream is to one day, I want to, I want to work, like, I'd love to be on a, on a movie or a show or something with Mary Walsh, like, like when she does the Fury movies. I love, um, did you see A Christmas Fury? My dear, if you haven't, it's not even fit. Uh, like I dies laughing at it, right? Is a is a Christmas is a Christmas uh, special. It's from the show Hatchy Matching and Dispatching. So they owns like a a complex type of thing that does like embalming and stuff like that. And they also do, so they does funerals and weddings. And they also got a paramedic ambulance and stuff like that. So that's why it's called hatching because they birth babies, matching and dispatching. Imagine. Yeah, and anyway, I absolutely loved that show. It was only on for one season, unfortunately, but I think they should bring it back. And uh, I want to be on it. I could be one of their cousins, right? That goes to a party and loses their teeth and then like comes back the next day and finds them in somebody else's coat. Yeah, I could do that. I, but like, you know, I haven't got false teeth. I don't know how to play that, but it could be like my girlfriend or my boyfriend's like teeth, right? Right? So there's an offer for you. In, uh, anyway, but I want to tell you, I, so I met Andy Jones. I did a comedy writing workshop with him and I've after seen him several times throughout the years because I'm involved in theater and stuff like that in Gander and he's been here and I've seen him and stuff. But Greg Malone, got to tell you about the time I met Greg Malone. So I love this man. Okay. So like First it was the wonderful grand band, and then he had Codco, and I loved him. No one made me laugh harder than this man. And I was going to a provincial drama festival, and I couldn't wait, because Greg Malone was going to be the adjudicator at provincial drama festival. Ah, I was going to get to meet Greg Malone, finally, and I was so excited. And anyway, so we were at adjudication one morning and adjudication is like, so the night before you does a play and then the next morning the adjudicator comes in and tells you how bad you did, right? 
But, so Greg Malone was the adjudicator this year. And I was excited. So anyway, he had some lo lovely words to say and stuff like that. And anyway, after it was all over, he's like, does anybody here give me a ride? I can. Great opportunity to give Greg Malone a ride home and tell him how much he's meant to me all these years. Yes, please. Right, I was very excited. And then, so anyway, I was in Lab City. I had my uncle's old truck, right? He was gone away and he gave me this old truck that he had because we needed a pickup truck in order to carry around the goods and stuff like that for the theater, for the set and stuff. We need to go collect it and bring it, whatever. So anyway, I think the tires on it was bald and everything like that. Anyway, so I was like, yes, bye. I'll give you a ride home in me dirty old truck. So I don't know what he thought of that, right? Getting in the truck, but he didn't say anything. He was nice as kind. Anyway, guess what happened? Got stuck in a snowbank. True story. With my absolute idol, I got stuck in a snowbank. You know, Greg Malone, I love you. And, um, you know, you've meant so much to me over the years. And you're my inspiration in comedy. But, um, you know, can you get out and give me a push? My dear mortified just about died ready had a good laugh at it and everything like that he was you know he's well he was good humored about it imagine but anyway i was like my 16 year old self is dying can you imagine if at 16 you had told me oh you know when you're about 43 44 you're gonna have greg malone in your truck but you're gonna get stuck and he gotta get out and push you yeah okay yeah that's just like that's you know not surprising. If I was going to meet my idol, that's how to do it. Anyway, so that's it. That's my story about how I met Greg Malone. And uh, I'm going to go now and um, wallow in me uh, sorrows. Anyway, no, I'm, not, I'm just joking. I'm not too upset about it. And to be honest with you, I'm glad I got a story out of it. So um, anyway, thanks, boys. Thanks for the inspiration. This is what you inspired. Imagine. You must be some proud. Yep. Yeah.